Po. Good evening, good evening, everyone, and welcome, uh, welcome po to our fourth truth or false uh, service. And uh, in this uh, platform, po, uh, we are here uh, wanting to share, you know, uh, the importance po of uh, doctrines uh, into our lives. And uh, this afternoon, we actually have a very exciting new series, po. So. Uh, we want to greet uh, the people who are here already sa ating pong uh, broadcast. Uh, kay Brother June Kampita, good evening. Kay Sister Dang po, Aguilera. Kay Boss Aimee. Kay Sister uh, Lolit po, uh, Tita Lolit po, Sorry, good Lolit. evening. Yes. yes po. Ayan, so if uh, may mga nanonood po na hindi pa po kami kilala, uh, let us introduce ourselves. Po, uh, I am Pastor Hope Piliarta from Beginnings Church, and of course, we are uh, being led po and joined today by our Pastor Danny Villa po, uh, one of our yan uh, PLT rin po pastoral leadership team. Ayan, hindi na po ako na bulol <laughs> this time. <laughs> Last time po, I tried to uh, parang spell that out kasi eh, na bulol po ako. But anyways. Uh, this afternoon po, uh, we have, uh, as I've mentioned, we have an exciting uh, topic. And also, for our games uh, today, if you remember, if you have been watching po, yung broadcast po natin for the last three weeks, uh, we have been, uh, we have this game we call Truth or False. Yung true or False, parang True or False, but we replace the word uh, True ng Truth because we, uh, we believe that you know, uh, the word of God is the absolute truth, of course. So, um, w with our games today, Paul, we actually have a prize. Ayan. So, we will be giving uh, millennial Bibles, Paul. We will be giving five millennial, as, as much as five today. Yan po yung uh, five millennial Bibles. So, yeah. Kung hindi po nyo pa po alam kung ano yung millennial uh, Bible, yun po yung bagong Tagalog Bible ngayon. Uh, translated sa modern uh, language po natin. I mean, uh, yung, yung Tagalog natin ngayon. That's actually, <laughs> that's actually very exciting. Ayan. So, may mga nagpapashout, nag, uh, nagpapashout out lang po si Brother Jun Campita. Shout out daw sa Men's Prayer Group at Men in Action. Ayan. Kung nanonood po kayo ngayon, you know, uh, thumbs up naman dyan or, you know, uh, heart reaction. <laughs> Ayan po. All right. So, uh, as we begin po, uh, we would like to leave uh, or uh, parang pa, para sa umpisa po, uh, meron kaming unang pakulo. Ayan. So, can you please complete this sentence? Comment down below po yung inyo pong sagot. So, uh, ang sentence po is, the Bible is important to me because. The Bible is important to me because. So, paki-comment lang po yung inyo pong uh, inyo pong sagot diyan dito sa ating comment section. And as we continue, let us open this in prayer po. So, let's pray. Lord, we thank you again for this afternoon. We thank you, Lord, for this time that you've given us to study on your word, Panginoon, deeper. And we thank you, Lord, for giving us, you know, the understanding, Panginoon. And thank you for giving our uh, pastor, our teacher po, the wisdom, Panginoon, para po uh, maipaliwanag inyo pong salita sa amin. We thank you. We give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Ayan. So, uh, just a quick recap lang po ng nangyari uh, last uh, Saturday. So, we that was the last episode po ng ating series about the uh, uh, human government, the, the uh, doctrine of human government, of, of government. Ayan po. So last week we talked about you know how we Christian should be behaving sa atin pong mundo. So we talk about being the salt and light in the world. Ayan po. So but today uh PDV ano po ba yung ating uh, episode po yung theme natin for today? 
Well, uh, good evening po sa bawat isa. And I'd like to send greetings sa mga special friends ko po. Uh, sina Michael Lynn. Uh, they are from a place, uh, a country near where I live right now. I, I will not say where they live, okay? <laughs> but uh, I just want to welcome this uh, faithful uh, couple. Na, you know, they have gained an interest uh, in with the word, no? with the word of God. Okay, uh, hi, hi to all of you. And, and today po, we are starting a new series. At ang bagong series po natin is about the doctrine of scriptures. What does, uh, you know, ano ba itong Bible natin? So we're going to explore that. Kasi napakahalaga talaga. And we're going to explore yung mga issues about the Bible. Amen. Ayun po. Thank you so much, Pastor Danny. Ayan, uh, ituloy ko lang din po yung pag-shout out no, kay uh, Sister Sienna. Ayan. And then kay Pastor Romar uh, Helasio po uh, from Isabela. Ayan. Oh, <laughs> may baga, may baga malim. May baga <laughs> rabi. Rabi, rabi, rabi ayan. <laughs> Gabi na po. Ayan, nag po sa mga hindi nakakaalam po. nag po si PDV. <laughs> Ilocano po din. Pareha po kaming Ilocano. So shout out sa mga Ilocano po diyan. <laughs> Ayan, so may mga sumasagot na po PDV. So um, what we're going to do po is we're going to read back the comments later and then uh, we will determine po kung sino yung mabibigyan ng Bible and then we will directly contact you po on how we could send the Bible to you. Ayan po. So without further ado po, uh, may we ask our boss po to play our uh, recorded teaching? Today, we shift our focus from the study of the doctrine of human government and the role and mission of the church in society to the doctrine of the scriptures. What do we believe about the Bible? We believe the Bible is God's word. We accept all 66 books, the 39 in the Old Testament, and the 27 books of the New Testament as God's authoritative word for our lives. Let's answer three questions today. First, what does the praise word of God mean? Second, what, why do we call the Bible a written book, the word of God? Here, we will talk about the supernatural work of God involved in the writing of his word. And finally, how do we apply this biblical truth to our lives? We encountered the idea of the word of God immediately upon opening the Bible. The creation account in Genesis 1 portrays God as a craftsman shaping the world, not with his hands, but with his words. He brings the whole universe into existence by speaking everything into being. God's words do things. In Genesis 2, where readers are given a more detailed account of creation, the author presents God as shaping the world he has made with his words. His command to Adam to eat of any tree of the garden, but not the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, creates both a boundary for the world of the first humans and a means to continue life with God in the garden. Genesis 3 introduces us to the first challenge posed by the snake and the horrifying consequences of defying his words. In Exodus, God gave Israel his newly constituted covenant people the Ten Commandments, or the Ten Words. What were these words? They were God's Word intended to bring order, form, and shape in Israel's life then and to us now as His followers. His words reveals Himself, His nature, works, mind, His redemptive plans, and His ways. His words also instructs God's people on how they relate to Him, to one another, and the world they live in. Psalm 19 presents God's word shaping, nourishing, and saving power. The law of the Lord is perfect, nourishing the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is, is pure, enduring forever. The decrees of the Lord are firm and all of them are righteous. They are more precious than gold, than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, 
than honey from the honeycomb. By them, your servant is warned. In keeping them, there is great reward. But who can discern their errors? Forgive my hidden faults. The psalmist praises God for his word. The Lord Jesus reveals a similar passion and value for God's word. Being the word incarnate, his mission and relationship with the word stands together. He frequently quoted from the different books of the Old Testament, referring to these passages as the word of God. In his threefold temptations recorded by Matthew and Luke, he responded to Satan's attacks by quoting the Old Testament, introducing its response with, it is written. He said to Satan's face, why should I? It has been written and stands written. Jesus acknowledges God's word's authority, permanence, and timeless applicability. He spoke of the authority and permanence of the scripture. He said, the scripture cannot be broken or until heaven and earth disappears, not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of a pen, will by means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Jesus also used the phrase word of God on several occasions. In Matthew 19, 5, the passage on marriage and the prohibition of divorce, Jesus cites the narrator's words of Genesis 2, 24 as God's own speech. Thus, the phrase, Word of God, refers to God's speech as He brings order out of chaos and makes His will known. His words are prophetic corrections to His people to keep them within His gracious ordering. His words are life when obeyed and death when ignored and defied. Second, why do we call the Bible the Word of God? Weren't the 66 books written by human authors? Yes, the Bible was written by human authors. However, the Bible also has a divine author. The Bible affirms dual authorship. God himself authored these books. He brought these writings into existence by speaking them, uh, by inspiring or breathing into those he chose to get his word in written form. This process is called inspiration of the Bible. By it, we do not mean the authors had a moment of ecstatic inspiration. Inspiration refers to the supernatural influence of the Spirit on the scripture writers that rendered the writings an accurate record of the revelation or that resulted in what they wrote is the Word of God. Two passages describe this writing miracle. One reference comes from Paul in 2 Timothy 3.16. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. In this passage, Paul exhorts Timothy to continue in the teachings that he has received. Paul assumes his spiritual son is familiar with the Holy Scriptures, and he urges him to continue in them since they are divinely inspired, or more correctly, God-spired or God-breathed. The point here is that the scriptures are divinely produced. Just as God made his first creatures alive by breathing into them his breath, the bread of life. Paul also affirms the shaping, forming, vivifying. That, that term means to make alive, empowering purpose and nature of his word. These inscripturated words with divine origins add value to the building of the believer into maturity to be thoroughly equipped. Or good work. Another passage that traces the origin of the written scripture to God is Second Peter 1 20 to 21. Above all, you must understand that no prophecy of scripture came about by the prophet's interpretation, for prophecy never had its origin in the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. Here, Peter affirms that the Old Testament prophets did not prophesy on their own, not imagined messages. Instead, the writers were moved or born alone, much like a boat is carried along by waves, by the wave of the Spirit of God. Consequently, Peter's readers are, are told to heed the prophetic word because it is God's word. When we turn to the early church preaching, we find a similar understanding of the Old Testament. In Acts 1.16, Peter says, brothers, and 
the scriptures which the Holy Spirit spoke long ago through the mouth of David. And then he proceeds to quote from Psalm 69 and 109 regarding Judas. Peter not only regards David's words as authoritative, but he affirms that God spoke by the mouth of David. David was God's mouthpiece, so to speak. The same thought that God spoke by the mouth of the prophets is found in Acts 3 and 4. Then the early church preaching identifies it. It is written in the scriptures with what God has said. What about the New Testament? Did God also breathe uh, these out? First in John 14, and chapter 16, Jesus himself proclaimed the coming inspiration of the New Testament authors. The Paracletos, he said, will teach you all things. He will guide you into all truth. The New Testament is the result of that inspiration. Second Peter chapter 3 also shows the apostles' recognition that the writings of Paul had divine authority. Peter places Paul's writings on the same level as the Old Testament, indicating that he believed Paul's writings were scriptures from God and carried the authority and trueness of God's word. In 1 Corinthians 2.13, Paul further affirms that his teaching, as well as the other apostles, find their ultimate origin in God. And we impart this in words, not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the Spirit, he said. You know, he, the New Testament and the early Christian writings affirm the belief that the writings of the New Testament are not only brought about by human thought, but are of divine origin, inspired by no less but God. The whole Bible, all six, six books, is inspired by God. Finally, how should this teaching impact our attitude towards the Bible? When Grudem offers four applications, let me share three of this. First, the Bible is God's authoritative word for faith, doctrine, and formation. Through His word, He continues to form His people. The words informs the faith and guides His people toward their mission. This claim to authority applies exclusively to the scriptures. Some religious groups today bring in extra resources, such as church traditions or special revelations. Second, the Bible is necessary. We need God's word. We need a standard. We need a rule of faith. We need an unchanging standard. Everything in the world is changing. Look at our culture. Look at how lost we are. The Bible is necessary to keep an accurate view of God and of ourselves and what we need. The Bible is required to be saved. Finally, the Bible is sufficient. This does not mean that the Bible tells us everything about God. It will take an eternity to do that. But everything we need to know about God, to trust Him, worship Him, believe Him, follow Him, and share Him with the world is given in Scripture. Also, everything we need to be saved is sufficiently given in Scripture. Everything we need to build the church and equip God's people for life and ministry as a church. Everything I need to love my wife and children, follow, follow Christ as a teacher pastor, and serve others in His name and power. I have them all. The Bible has everything I need in this life. This is all for today, but we'll have more next week. Next week, we'll look at some scriptures that we often misuse. Stop the misuse. Join us next week. And even better, invite others. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Ganda po ng ending. <laughs> May advertisement, you know. Yeah, that's um uh tawag dito, uh that's a uh, true po no. Uh you know, there are some verses that are really uh, being misused uh today, but just to clarify po kasi, uh, because of some uh scheduling uh tawag dito uh, difficulties po with our uh, team members. Uh, yun pong part yung discussion about the misused um, verses po of the Bible will be moved to other uh, Saturdays po. So next week, we will be tackling about the central message of the Bible. So yes. yun po. And uh, we thank you for that uh, very heavy actually. <laughs> Uh, teaching po, no? But that's why we have this part po because uh, hihimay-himayin po natin iyan. So, uh, to our viewers po, uh, I know some of you already have uh, 
uh, questions. Uh, kapag uh, tinatanong po, sinasabi po uh, na Bible, uh, some of us uh, automatically have uh, questions actually. So this is actually the time for us to ask questions. So uh, you can post your question uh, down on the comment section po. And then uh, Pastor Danny and I will try our best to answer those uh, questions po. And uh, I feel the need po to introduce uh, further po si Pastor Danny po. No? Um, siya po ang ating teacher sa church po uh, with our Dell program. He has been, uh, he also taught in seminaries po. Semin yeah, in, in Davao Bible College, also in uh, Asian Seminary of Christian Ministries po. Also in Hong Kong. Also in Hong Kong. <laughs> ano pala? And for those, ito po, nagulat ako na hindi ko alam dati, kailan ko lang nalaman. He actually holds a doctorate degree in theology. Kasi ayaw po niyang pinag-uusapan uh, pinag yun. But anyways, ayan po PDV. <laughs> Ang atin pong doctor, muntik po namin tawagin si Pastor Danny na Doctor Doctrine. <laughs> Anyways, ayan po. So, before uh, po natin himay-himayin yung lesson for today, PDV, can you please give us an update po? Uh, or, or maybe first, uh, can you please give us your answer po on why is uh, the study of the scripture or why is the scripture so uh, important to you personally? And then maybe you can update us on the uh, important or current developments in, in this field po in the study of the Bible. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you, Hope. No. Uh, let me let me answer your first question. Why is the Bible important to me? Personally, uh, it's important to me because, you know, I, I want people to follow Christ. And in order to follow Christ, we truly need a, an authoritative basis. I'm very concerned about my family, the next generation. Malaki ang family namin, Pastor Hope, eh. Talagang if you go to Mindanao, libo-libo ang angkan namin. And mm. there, there's a lot of our families who have been being brought to Christ. And, you know, ang concern ko talaga na there has to be a basis for our faith. And that's why I'm very concerned about the development of the, of the Bible. On a personal uh, basis then, ang Bible napakahalaga because it really provides you with guide, no? It it guides you without the bible you would be lost you know? <laughs> I, I i just uh, uh noticed no some of our brothers and sisters uh, yung current yung recent election some of them have been devastated uh, because mm -hmm. they they put so much into the election and i don't blame them no because they invested uh they they hope uh for something to happen and when it did not happen they they got affected Pero makikita mo na those who have knowledge of scripture, they could uh, be affected for a while, pero they will stand up again. Alam mo kung bakit? Because they know that the word of God, na alam nila na God is in full control, alam nila yung sovereignty ni Lord, at alam din nila na ang hope ng mundo hindi nakasalalay sa mga political leaders, but uh, it really uh, rests uh, with the Lord. Kaya napakalaga po ang, ang Bible. Ano? And I pray that as a church and as followers ni Christ, we would be on guard about uh, the current attacks on the Bible. Ito, isa ito sa mga concerns ko eh. Now there, is, there seems to be a parang a focus attack on the authority of, of the scriptures. Parang they're trying to do everything they could para... Uh, uh, alisin yung yung authority ng scriptures why as as teachers we need to be on guard uh yung mga developments sa sa scholarship ng about the scriptures uh, yung second question mo ako i'm quite excited no about the current uh, studies that are being made uh there was uh, a big study on textual criticism in the past pero ngayon parang nakakaroon ng renewed interest kasi yung mga nag attack ng Bible, they are pointing to yung mga alleged uh, questionable text of the scripture and they are saying na hindi talaga you know, uh, trustworthy ang Bible. So in response, the church has been parang uh, standing up to the challenge and they are going back 
to the study of the manuscripts no? <laughs> para ipakita no if, if there is a book that has the most uh, support in terms of veracity and truthfulness walang walang ano walang second <laughs> to the bible all the books in the in in the world today uh talk about the classic books the old books the new books wala po ang walang support no in terms of yung veracity no the, the text uh, compared to the scriptures yan po yung isa sa mga exciting things isa pa sa mga exciting things yung emphasis on the genre alam mo uh, nung time namin i got saved in the 70s uh, we don't talk about the genre of scriptures we don't talk about poetry we don't talk so much mm. about the gospels as a special genre pero these days alam mo pastor hope uh, yung mga scholars they are they are beginning to tell us that yung yung choice of the genre for example yung gospels for example the letters of paul yung epis, epistles mm. for example yung mga narratives they, they were not accidental. Talaga yung mga nagsulat were also inspired by the Lord to communicate the, the message, the Word of God, uh, with this unique literary genre. And our scholars today all are beginning to call our attention. Sabi nila, hey, come, come, join with us as we explore the significance of the literary genre of the Bible. There are so many exciting things going on scholarship the bible but that's that's for now okay wow yeah well <laughs> certainly po when when we talk about those things you know our time will not allow us but anyways yes, thank yes. you so <laughs> thank you so much pope uh, pdv no yeah um uh in my own experience din po kasi i also parang i i, I even na mas bata po ako kaysa kay pdv po no pero uh, before i went to the bible school din po I wasn't really paying attention din sa mga iba't ibang klase ng uh, genres nga po ng uh, Bible. Parang I, I view the Bible before. I even didn't uh, put parang so much uh, thought into uh, analyzing that the Bible or realizing that the Bible is actually not one book. So uh, ang iniisip ko po noon is isang book lang yan talaga. <laughs> yan lang yung naisip ko but you know. Tama po yung sinabi ni PDV, no? And uh, when I studied in the Bible school, and then nung nag, uh, nag-study rin po ako under P, uh, PDV, uh, there's this one uh, book po that really helps me on how to study the different genres of the Bible. Yun po yung uh, reading, tama po ba PDV? Reading the Bible for all, for all its worth by Gordon Fee? Yes. Oh yes, diba? that's yes, a good po. book. So I highly recommend those po. Hanggang ngayon po, uh, that uh, becomes one of my parang reference book whenever I do a uh, study po I always go back to that you know how to interpret this kind of uh, genre this kind of literature so para binabalik balikan ko po yun so Amen. You know, Pastor Hope I, can I can I yes, interrupt pa. a little bit kasi there was one thing I wanted to share sana medyo I got so carried by the exciting things about uh, yung developments sa scholarship and Bible I forgot to share yung why is the Bible important to me. Kaninang morning po, yung ating readings was from Leviticus chapter 19. And I think for a lot of people, kaya parang siya boring kasi he talks about laws, he talks about what God expects, yung mga ganun. But I was, well, this morning when I was reading yung, yung one of the commands of God, na yung mga farmers, pag nagka, nag-ani sila, Na wag, hindi nila kukunin lahat ng mga inani but mag-iwan sila para sa mga widows, para sa mga mahihirap. Alam mo, Pastor, I, I, I was crying this morning ano, kasi the, even, even that simple command parang showed me who God is and mm. wow, talagang the, the, the reason I value the scriptures, it really reveals who God is and it, it enhances it enhances yung worship natin para sa Panginoon. So, y- yun po, bakit napakalagang Bible Amen. sa kapagbasa nito? Yeah. No, uh, I feel the need din po na i-express uh, yung sagot ko po doon kasi ang dami na pong sumagot. Actually, PDV, ang gaganda po ng mga sagot nila. Uh, let and me yes, just... It's really dumb. 
Uh, Paul, just let me just read Sam. Sabi po ni uh, Pastor Ana, the Bible is personally important to me because I've experienced God speaking to me through His Word. It becomes a strong foundation that informs my decisions, anchors my emotion, and leads me to live for a greater purpose with God's family. The Bible centers us on Jesus and the truth. Of, so it makes us secure talaga. Ayan. Sabi po ni Pastor Louie, the Bible is important to me because it helps me know God personally and it helps me grow in my relationship and faith in Him. Ayan Amen. Po. Ah, gaganda. Ito po, sabi ni Sister Christy Campita, it, it is important to me because I believe it is the living Word of God. It speaks hmm. about who our God is, all His creation, and His great love to us humans, the Bible, and authoritative uh, words in my life because this is the only truth that will lead me to the right path. Mm. Ayan. And then yung mga una po kanina, uh, sabi po ni, ayan, ni Pastor Romar, sabi po, it's important because it is life. The Word of God is, is life. life. Yes po. And sabi po ni uh, Sister Luke, Cresha Santos in a food. It is food for is in it's important because it's food for the soul. Ayun yes, po. Yes. <laughs> Akin din po parang uh, parehas po kami ni Sister Christy po no. Uh, three things po why it's important. First because it reveals to me who God is, yung character po ni ni God. Second is it re- it shows me who I am. Parang mirror yes. para sa akin po yung Bible. Eh. Nakikita ko yung sarili ko. And then third is, it reveals to me yung redempt- redemptive plan ng ating Panginoon. The plan uh, po yung, kung saan, I mean, yung, yung promises ni Lord for me. Parang, yeah, that, that's why it's important for me. Ayan po. So thank you sa mga uh, nag-share po ng thoughts nila. You know, we appreciate it. Ayan, so let's go to the... Uh, teaching na po. <laughs> you know tayo. So, uh, first po, uh, doon sa teaching po, yung def- uh, defining the Word of God, the first part of the teaching, uh, defining the Word of God. I've noticed po, uh, PDV, that you did not actually define what uh, does uh, what you mean by the Word of God. Instead, you actually describe it. So, uh, what is the Word of God and what uh, do we mean when we say that the Bible is the Word of God? Okay. Okay. Uh... Ako, na-appreciate ko yung mga, mga answers no, of, uh, from our viewers and thank you for all those answers. I, I think all the answers, wala ko narinig na questionable. No? They all reflect the importance of the scripture and what the Bible is. Basically, um, when we say that the Bible is the word of God, it means it is uh, the communication of who God is. It's a re- revelation kung sino ang God, kung ano yung will niya, kung ano yung redemptive purposes niya. So, so and I think all of those were mentioned no, by, by the others. Pero gusto kong dagdagan dyan na the Bible is not just a revelation of who God is, what He wants, what His redemptive purposes. Uh, and that is a big uh, definition no, of God's Word. But it also reveals kung kung yung kung sino siya uh, mm-hmm. kung ano yung kanyang kagustuhan at, and very important that i pointed sa teaching na ang word ni god is god's uh, forming word no talagang uh, in, in creation just as god created the universe by speaking nako i gave away na yung the <laughs> <yung> question natin <laughs> Just as the Lord no, formed the universe by speaking His Word. Alam mo ba kung ano ang purpose ng Word? It is to form God's people. Because God is forming a unique kind of people. The world also, of course, and, and other... Uh, you know, and others, no, other voices in the world, they are competing in trying to form people, humanity, according to their, uh, according to what they want. But God is forming a unique kind of people, people who love him, people who obey him, people who begin to resemble him more and more, people who are fitted to him. Kaya, 
Ito po yung Word of God. It is the instrument God uses to form His people so that we become who He wants us to be. Kaya pag sinabing the Bible is God's Word, again, it's, it's a revelation of who God is, yung purposes niya, yung will niya, yung what He wants, how He wants us to live, uh, you know, for Him and with others and with ourselves. But, but even more importantly, the Word of God is the instrument God uses to form us according to what He wants us to be. Mm. Wow. <laughs> yes, Paul. That's why, you know, Paul, uh, you can get why uh, PDV opted to describe it and not to define it, po, no? Kasi... <laughs> Mahirap nga talaga naman siyang edifying. Ayan, uh, before we continue po PDV, uh, since na nabigay na po ni PDV yung sagot sa una nating truth or false po, no? uh, maybe uh, I'll, I'll just ask that later po. But oh, uh, ang una po nating truth or false, ayan. And uh, to repeat po, kanina sinabi ko po, uh, may price po yung truth or false natin ngayon. So we will be giving five millennial Bibles po today. So, uh, Maghanda-handa na po tayo. Uh, yan po. Uh, unang uh, truth or false, you know, uh, the Bible is solely authored by God. So, the Bible is authored by God only. Is that truth or false? Ayan. <laughs> yan po. So, uh, again, as I mentioned earlier po, uh, we will just be reading back those comments po to determine po kung uh, sino yung makaka-receive ng Millennial Bible po natin and then we will be contacting you directly. Ayan. So, well, uh, to uh, continue PDV, so, uh, one of the questions I heard po, people ask about the Word of God relates to the other uh, books acknowledged by uh, their followers as God's authoritative uh, Word for them. So, uh, you know, other groups have additional sources. Uh, they have Bibles plus their, uh, you know, uh, extra sources. Po. So, question is, does God also speak to the people with their scriptures, their own, you know, uh, scriptures and uh, the additionals? Po? And uh, yun po, uh, the scriptures and their other authority sources. Yun nga po. How should Christ followers respond to those who make these claims? Wow. Medyo mabigat yung question. Ano? And uh, again, uh, I don't want to be disrespectful. Uh, this this uh, broadcast po is made in order to share um, what what we believe to be true, and uh, sometimes we we say things that might appear to you know parang correct as some of the yung pananaw ng iba. So we speak uh, respectfully. Una sa lahat, Pastor, I I believe po. I acknowledge the right of every person to, you know, to look at uh, a scripture, what their, their scripture, parang yung basis of their faith and authority uh, for their lives. I think that's the right of every person to to make, no? And we are not enforcing na yung Bible, <laughs> that they must subscribe to the Bible. We are not making it illegal. Uh, it's it's the right of every person to look at a book or to a teacher and you know and if they are convinced that that person uh, tells the truth then it's their right to do that however as followers of christ ang, ang bible talaga is different eh. uh, una makikita mo yung uh, uh, makikita mo yung uh, reasons why we, we have so much faith in the scriptures. Pakita mo yung mga outside uh, reasons, for example, external reasons. For example, yung preservation of Bible. Do you know of any book that has gone through uh, so much attack than the Bible? And yet, the Bible uh, remains to be the number one most read book in the Bible. Uh, there have been people and groups, you know, and and... And countries, no, they, they, in their minds, we are going to remove and destroy the Bible. Wala na. Alisin namin yung Word of God. But wala eh. Until now, the Bible remains uh, existence. And in fact, it's gaining more uh, parang readers and, and followers. Pero ito lang sabihin ko. Uh, 
you may have the right uh, to believe na yung writings ng grupo mo uh, is the authority of your life. But please consider po, what kind of society, what kind of person is your authority building up? And if you ask what kind of society, what kind of people uh, does the Bible build up? Kasi ang Word of God is God's tool to form a people. And I think ito po eh, Magkukusto mo ng uh, society who a society who love God, who obeys God, uh, a society who is kind, a society who values life, a society who you know the, the, the loves uh, what God has revealed about Himself in the in, in the Scripture. Then the Scripture is our authority. Kaya although you have the right over the authorities you have made into your life. Na yung Bible talaga, it, it communicates a unique message na when you understand what it is telling us about God, you will realize na ito talaga yung totoong salita ng Panginoon. Amen. Thank you po, PDV. Yan po, uh, klaro po, no? Uh, kanina po sabi ni PDV, you know, uh, we want to be respectful, uh, but... Uh, I have this feeling po na baka yung iba are getting lost what we're talking about when we say extra sources. Is it okay, PDV, that you mention some like extra sources uh -oh. po? Uh, well, uh, yung, mga, yung Mormon group, they have the Book of Mormons, mm -hmm. for example. Uh, yung, sa, yung largest uh, religious group sa Philippines, uh, they also, they say they believe the Bible, but they also have their their traditions and yeah. uh, yung church traditions nila. And you, you know what is sad about these groups who claim they believe the Bible, but also their traditions, is they end up valuing their traditions more, yung extra source nila other than the Bible. Kasi a lot of these extra sources are the basis of uh, some of their uh, values and teachings that sadly are, are contrary to the teaching of the Bible. Kaya meron kang dalawang sources, magkaiba ang turo. Eh, especially kapag ang, ang, ang topic uh, ang topic is about salvation. Can you imagine that? You, having two sources that are teaching you about how to be saved. And these two sources, they differ from each other. So we better be careful, ano? Kasi if you, if you put your faith on a source that leads you to believe uh, another way to be saved other than what the scripture teaches, which is salvation is by grace alone in Christ alone, according to the scriptures alone, then wow, you will be in great trouble, right? Amen. Yes, Paul, ayan. So uh, especially nowadays po no na ang generation po natin are actually um tawag dito less readers na actually <laughs> uh, yeah. so uh, traditions are becoming more parang it's making more sense uh, for them yun po lalong lalo na kung lalo, kapag kinalakihan na po eh, nila iyan yes. po anyways yun po uh, thank you uh, PDV for uh, clarifying that and for that uh, answer po no uh, yan, <laughs> ang dami pong sumagot ng uh, tama doon sa atin pong question kanina. So, uh, the Bible, uh, to answer the question po kanina, truth or false, the, the correct answer po is false. Yeah, because kung pinakinggan po natin yung turo ni PDV kanina, yung teaching po, no, it's dual authorship po. So, God and uh, the men who are inspired by God po. Na... Uh, magsulat. Ayan. So, uh, another question po. Uh, ito, uh, sa, kung nakikinig po kayo kay PDV kanina, not on the recorded teaching po, but uh, sa kanyang sinabi kanina, alam nyo rin po yung sagot dito. Second, truth or false po. So, God crafted the universe with His powerful and creative hands. You know, truth or false. God crafted the universe with His powerful and creative hands. 
truth or false. And uh, by the way po, uh, uh, we appreciate you being so active on the comment section. If you have questions or follow-up questions doon po sa mga dinidiscuss po natin, no? uh, please do uh, comment them, uh, them down below po so that we can also address them. Ayan. Yan po, ayan, marami nang nag <laughs> sumasagot ulit. Ayan, may, maraming gustong makakuha ng Millennial Bible PDV. By the way po, yung Millennial Bible po is also uh, sponsored by Pastor Danny. <laughs> Bill, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, so, yeah, big thanks po talaga kay Pastor Danny. I want more people to read the Bible. Yan, yes po. It's actually really a good, uh, po, no, I, I'm also praying to get one of those PDV. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> ayan po. So thank you. Okay, so let's now uh, continue po, no? Let's uh, shift our discussion to the uh, inspiration of the Bible. Let's talk about uh, the inspiration of the Bible po. Kanina, uh, doon sa teaching po, PDV uh, quoted po doon sa uh, yung scripture po, no? Which is actually the Second Timothy 3.16 to 17, which is... Uh, sabi po dito, this is a famous verse, you know, all scriptures are God-breathed. Um, in other translation, in NLT po, uh, ibang word yung ginamit, it's uh, inspired. So, uh, maybe uh, PDV, um, can you share a quick uh, parang uh, summary of uh, what this means po? Oh, <laughs> well, Paul is... Uh... Yeah, you know, he was talking to his spiritual son and he was telling him na itong scripture that uh, brought him salvation, that which he learned from his parents and her grand, his grandma and his mom, na ito yung uh, word ni God, which, is, uh, which came from God. And that's the significance of the word uh, breathed out by God, that the word comes from God and, and, the, and the result of this uh, if this work of God uh, is the scripture. <coughs> Doon sa, sa Second Timothy, uh, Pastor Hope, the emphasis here is the finished product. Ang inspiration uh, resulted in the book, in the, in the scripture. Yun ang ini-emphasize niya na as a result of this work of the, <laughs> sorry, this work of the Holy Spirit, uh, we have uh, we have the scriptures and its usefulness is uh, you know it's it's useful for teaching correcting and especially for training uh, men and women uh, for for righteousness in fact uh, it also refers to the completing effect of God's word yung Greek word po doon, that uh, the man of God would be thoroughly equipped it can also mean parang it it completes us the scripture is given so that tayo na may pagkukulang might uh, gain our completion in the lord amen <laughs> yeah well uh, thank you uh, just a follow up question uh, on that pdv po, no? you mentioned that yung yung, yung emphasis po nung uh, sinabi ni Paul dito is the completion uh, the completed uh, bible po or the, the written words uh, last time that we had a conversation po kasi with PDV, we were talking about the other books po na that are not included in the Bible na ex, uh, existing na po during that time. So uh, my question, uh, PDV, is that uh, when Paul said that, uh, you know, all scriptures are God-breathed, does that include those books? Uh, good question. When... When Paul uh, referred to all scripture, he was actually referring to the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. And the Old Testament uh, that is acknowledged as true and canon by the Jewish people did not include those books. The apocryphal books were not uh, included in the Jewish Bible. Hindi po sila kasama. Hindi nila acknowledge na ito ay galing sa Diyos. Although they are useful, kasi yung mga apocryphal books, they provide uh, historical reference. Parang they give us a history of uh, what happened uh, during those times. Yan. 
Thank you po for that uh, clarification, PDV. Kasi uh, we might uh, encounter uh, some other groups po uh, na meron silang, yung Bible nila ay merong extra books. <laughs> Yun nga po, yung apocryphal books is, uh, you know, a group. Apocryphal books po is not only one PDV, no? Yes, Those yes. Are several. Several po na nakasama. Those are uh, just short uh, books po na kasama dun sa Bible nila. But anyways, uh, speaking of yun, uh, we are talking about the inspiration po, no? Can you please explain to us, PDV, yung dual authorship of the Bible and why it is important? Well, uh, the, the Bible uh, is both uh, human and divine. Pero it's God's word. Uh, that means na God uh, God guided. No, there is a special uh, supervision of the Holy Spirit on the people that God has chose to write His word. No, so that the result is uh, it perfectly expresses yung yung will ni God, yung word ni God, yung revelation ni God, yung purposes ni God. So what they wrote expressed uh, what God wanted to communicate to people. Now, bakit mahalaga yung uh, recognition natin that the Bible has dual authorship? Well, first of all, mahalaga yan when you study the Bible. Because uh, the way that God guided the writing of the Bible is super special talaga na God did not uh, dictate the the words to be written <laughs> he did not uh, the writers were not did not serve as secretaries parang dictate niya na, it's not it's not like that but there was this uh, special working of god in the lives of the writers so that the writers were allowed to express god's word in their with their own thoughts using their own vocabularies expressing their own personalities and, and all of that kaya mahalaga na ma-recognize natin yung human factor of the bible kasi when you study the bible para maget natin yung word of god we have to understand yung mga the circumstances surrounding the author we need to appreciate who the author was yung background niya yung reason for the writing you know because god did not just give us propositions truth number one truth number two truth number three hindi ganon eh kundi the lord uh move the writers to write stories to write their experiences and and out of those uh writings no god uh, gives us his word kaya napakalaga yung uh, that we understand the dual authorship of the scriptures okay and and one of our less one of our saturday one of the saturdays we're going to be looking at how do we interpret the Bible. Yeah, yeah that's uh, very exciting po, no? Uh, yes, <clears throat> Something to look forward up. to. <laughs> yes, well, how to Amen. interpret the Bible and then apply it to ourselves. And po, um, follow-up questions, uh, PDV po, no? Because I've been uh, hearing uh, a lot of people uh, when, say, when I say a lot of people po, hindi naman po ibig sabihin directly kakilala ko po, no? But when you go online po kasi, uh, ang daming nagkukwestiyon talaga ng authority ng uh, Bible. Uh, some of them are not recognizing yung process of the inspiration like uh, the canon itself. Uh, mm -hmm. So, um, you know, the canon means nothing uh, to them uh, for uh, some people. And also, uh, when you you mentioned PDV na eh, these uh, no God works uh, sa sa mga tao po no uh, to God chooses these people and then also we we recognize that these letters are written to some specific uh, audiences so yes. there are also people who are just picking uh, things up from the Bible not acknowledging the whole Bible itself as the word of the Lord. Pero ang ginagawa po nila, ah, ito, hindi, 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 naka, hindi ako nakaka-relate dito. This is not for me. This is not the <laughs> word of God. So, you know, uh, how do we respond to those PDV? Wow. <laughs> Mukasang po yata yung question mo, Pastor Hope. <laughs> let, let me answer the, the first one, yung, yung uh, the question on the canon. Um, yung, yung po mga attackers of the Bible today, they, they alleged na ang canon 
is the result of Constantine's uh, mm. order na gumawa ng Bible, uh, which is not true. You know? They're also saying na ang nag-decide kung ano ang Bible, ano yung book na i-recognize na part of the canonized Bible. Pag kasi sinabi mong canon kasi, ito yung acknowledged na books that reflects yung yung authority ni God. Na th- these books, they, they talk about the truth of God. They sound like God uh, uh, spoke them, spoke them out. They Their teachings are also, they also coincide. They agree with the major teachings of the scriptures. Uh, kaya ang dami pong mga elements that were involved in in the process of the canonization. Ano. Uh, pero yung, yung allegation na church, ang church ang gumawa ng canon, I think they, it's the other way around it. Actually, it's the scripture that build the church. It's not the church that build the scriptures. The, the church did not make the Bible. It's the scripture that built the church. And ang ginawa ng church is just to acknowledge yung witness ni God into the church kung ano yung mga books that are that belong to the canon. Ganyan. It, it's, a, it's, a, it's a bit of a uh, may, may complexity siya konti but uh, yung mga allegations po nila nagawa-gawa lang ng tao yan that is not true. In fact, uh, si Constantine po did not did not command na kung sino yung kung ano yung pipiliing Bible. He did not command that. Ang inuutos niya ay magkaroon ng proseso para ma-recognize kung ano yung mga books that were that should become a part of the acknowledged uh, authoritative word of God. Yan, yan yung kinumand niya. And the, the church fathers, you know, Eusebius and and all of those, uh, they started uh, meeting, praying, talking about uh, which book goes uh, into the scriptures. Alam mo ba, Pastor Hope? Now, there were, there were books who were not immediately in part of the canon. There were also books that were, that were thought to be part of the canon who, that ended up not, not acknowledged as part of the canon. And there were other books that it took a while para maging bahagi sila ng mm. Word of God. But it was a process. At tayo po, ng mga followers ni God, we, we believe kasi na if God, if, if God uh, breathed out the scriptures, mm-hmm. if God made a way para i-communicate niya yung word niya sa atin, then there will also be this guidance that God will make so that when the church started their their yung effort nila to 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 seek God and ask for guidance para ma recognize kung ano yung authoritative word at kung ano yung hindi that God also guided them and and uh, someone might ask but but how do you know which book would would go there let, let me just give you a quick answer no kasi one some of the the attackers of the bible ngayon katulad na ng uh, marami po sila na, uh, actually there was a movie uh, several years ago na yung Da Vinci Code no? <laughs> at itong Da Vinci Code ang inaalads nito na yung Gospel of Thomas no? uh, Gospel of Thomas one of the uh, Gnostic Gospels mm-hmm. ay bahagi daw yan ng scriptures kaya lang tinanggal daw kasi ang sabi, ang sabi nila Kasi daw yung Gospel of Thomas, tinuturo niya na si, na si Mary ay asawa ni Jesus. At saka, si, saka yung early church daw, uh, yung New Testament time, si Jesus is a tao lang. Tao lang siya. Kaya sabi nila, yung Gospel of Thomas was replaced by the Gospel of John para patunayan na si Christ is God. <laughs> Al- alam po ninyo, y- you have to you have to read ano you have to read what they are saying no don't just don't just uh parang y- you will hear someone oh sabi ni ganito hindi raw totoo yan at kaagad paniniwalaan mo na do a research at makikita po ninyo una sa lahat yung gospel of thomas was never a part 
of the acknowledged uh, canonized uh, Bible. No, hindi siya in acknowledge. Never was the Gospel of Thomas was a part of the scriptures. Uh, kaya yung yung inaalleged nila na ganun nga eh you know it's it's all fabricated po na ano yung gospel of john uh, yung revelation po and gospel of john especially revelation it took a while before they were admitted mm -hmm. pero eventually nakita po nung church na ito talagang gospel of john at saka book of revelation eh talagang they ano they reflect yung yung word of god kasi ang katuroan nila hindi sa lungat sa itinuturo ng pangkalahatang salita ng ating Panginoon. Yung Gospel of Thomas, tinuturo niya, tao lang si Jesus. Can you imagine that? At itinuturo niya na may nag-asawa si Jesus at saka si Mary. Can you imagine that? It's completely, uh, you know, unscriptural. Hindi po, hindi po siya totoo. Gawa-gawa lang. At uh, sadly, in their effort to attack the Bible, they, you know, they fabricate uh, these things. Mm. And sadly, it was actually a blockbuster movie po, no? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the Vinci Code. I also watched that. It's actually very disturbing po, no? Lahat nung yung mga yes. symbolism na uh, ginamit po nila doon. Anyways, uh, thank you, PDV. And um, ito po, uh, another question. Um, this was actually from Brother Jun. Uh, this is actually from uh, Brother Jun Kampita po, no? Um, may mga iba daw po na nagsasabi that because we have the New Testament now, the Old Testament is actually obsolete na. Pwede na natin silang hindi basahin. Uh, what's your response on that, PDV? Well, <laughs> oh, that's not true, no? Because... Uh, you can only fully appreciate the New Testament if you understand mm -hmm. what happened in the Old Testament. Uh, just an example. On Friday, si Pastor Louis was teaching us on the Day of Atonement. And he was talking about the one of the goats, you know, the sacrifices, was called the, the sin bearer, the scapegoat. You know, and it, it happened during the Day of Atonement. Pagkabinasa, Pagka, when you go to the New Testament and you read that Jesus is the sin bearer, that he carried our sins, well, uh, you will not fully appreciate that unless you have, you fully understand that on the Day of Atonement, the Lord had made the one goat, the one goat uh, got butchered and offered uh, to God for a sin offering. And the other was, uh, Yung, yung kasalanan ng buong Israel was laid on the head of the goat no that was released and made to go away it was a picture perfect no it was a picture to signify that God that this sacrifice would carry the sins of the people kaya hindi po tama no na na sabihin natin oh hindi mo na kailangan ang Old Testament hindi rin po tama na kapag ka may Old Testament ka, hindi mo na kailangan ang New Testament. Oh. Kasi, kanyan eh, parang promise and fulfillment. Mm. Gusto mo ba yung promise lang? You hear the promise, pero you don't get to know how it was fulfilled? You you want to have. And the Bible uh, presents both. no It presents the, the images, the shadows, and it also shows the real thing when it happened. Promise, uh, fulfillment. Yeah. So, Again, uh, to kanda po, no, uh, para summarize yung sinabi ni PDV, to, up, to really appreciate both uh, of the two groups po, you have to read both of them. So to ap fully appreciate yes. the New Testament, read the Old Testament as well. Yan po. Uh, yeah, we are a little bit over time na po, but uh, this is, I believe this is very important that uh, we ask uh, PDV to briefly uh, discuss po yung implication po ng uh, authority, the necessity, and the sufficiency of the Bible. <laughs> well, by, by authority, doon sa video po, sinabi ko po na we, we really need a basis. No? We need a standard. We need an authority to tell us what is true and what is not true. In these days, na yung truth is relativized. Parang there is no absolute truth na we really need the scriptures. Kaya kailangan po, wag, wag nating i-give up 
that the Bible is the authority for our lives. The world doesn't like it because, you know, the, the world wants its independence. It wants, uh, it, it wants nothing of God. And yet, when you understand the Bible was given by the Lord to point us to the Savior, to point us to God's plan of salvation, kailangan talaga natin yung authority for our lives. Now, when it comes to the yung necessity, eh, ganun pa rin, ano? Uh, who will guide us? Ngayon po na the world, uh, yung tinasabi nila na post-Christian world na tayo and everyone, you know, uh, is trying to uh, throw away the biblical values. Gusto na nilang palitan, no? For example, sa US po, sa West, they are, uh, parang they want to do away with gender. Wala nang lalaki o babae. And, and why is that happening? Well, it's all because the world uh, has rejected the Bible and now it is making its own moral uh, rules, no? Kaya ang mga followers ni Christ, we need the scriptures kasi siya yung standard natin. And when it comes to sufficiency, I love this, that the Bible is sufficient for us. Na huwag po kayong matakot, no? Uh, the younger ones, no? I'm praying that the younger ones... Don't be discouraged. Uh, the world will be against uh, God. They will. There, there, there is a movement away from God. Pero as followers of Christ, you can be very sure that God has provided the sufficiency. And part of that is the Scripture. Of course, kasama don yung Holy Spirit. Of course, kasama don yung whole body of Christ. Now, everything that we will need to be his witnesses, to be his salt and light in the world, to preach the gospel, we all have them. So don't be scared about the kind of world that is evolving because on the one hand, the world is going in one direction and yet on the other hand, there is also a new world God is building. And it is our calling to call as many people as we could to join us into this new creation that God is building. And we have His Word to guide and sustain us. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yun po, no? wow. Ang ganda. And, and thank you for those who are actually uh, joining us in the conversation po. No? I'd like to acknowledge din po yung uh, iba PDV, uh, isa pa pong pastor from Isabela, Pastor uh, Jet Sanchez. Uh, he was mentioning about yung inerrancy, yung authority and inerrancy of the canonized books po kanina. Uh, I think this is to appreciate lang po yung explanation. And uh, I love this uh, comment from Brother Jun Campita po. Uh, in response to yung question kanina about, you know, if we can... Uh, exclude na or hindi na pansin yung Old Testament. Sabi po sa Matthew uh, 5.17, sabi po na our Lord Jesus said, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law of the prophets. You know, I have come not to abolish them, but to fulfill them. No, ang ganda po, no? Yeah. So, uh, mm-hmm. it's, you know, for us to really appreciate what Jesus uh, is talking, uh, uh, you know, with, uh, talking about, uh, in this uh, verse po, no, we have to go back to the Old Testament. We have to see, no po, uh, it's a whole, actually, uh, it's a whole course po, if you would like. Pwede nyo pong contactin si PDV <laughs> na mag-organize <laughs> <laughs> ng course po, you know. <laughs> Amen. Well, uh, but anyway, Pastor Hope, Pastor yes, Hope can, can, can I take this opportunity? Ano? Go ahead po. Kasi next Saturday, yung, yung hmm. theme natin is yung central message of the Bible. So I think this is a topic you want to to know. No? Ano ba ang sinasabi ng Bible? What is the central message of the Bible? Yeah. I am I am super excited for that PDV. Uh, it's one of the classes po that I will never uh, forget po with you sa ating uh, Dell class po. Yeah, Dell, yung mga Dell student diyan. Kawaii-kawaii no. <laughs> <laughs> For those who, who are not from our church family po no, DEL means developing uh, developing effective leaders. That's a leadership program uh, of our church po no. So, uh, you know, if you would like to come and, you know, join us po in learning, you know, come! 
<laughs> you know, we encourage so, you. Praise the Lord. Yun po. And uh, yun din po, I'm, uh, for the, nasabi na po ni PDV po, no, for our uh, next topic po, we will be talking about the central message of the Bible. This is uh, really uh, exciting topic po. So come prepared. And next Saturday, we appreciate you being, you know, uh, so uh, immersive po dito sa ating discussion po no, today. And also, we apologize for the overtime again. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, yun po, um, we would like to again invite you and then uh, again dun sa mga makaka-receive po ng uh, Bibles, please uh, op- you know, uh, be open lang po sa communication. We will message you on Facebook. I will message you on Facebook po. Ayan, so we thank you. Uh, thank you PDV po for uh, the discussion po. And then, if you, uh, by the way, if you still have questions, it's not yet late to us po. We uh, we can address that next week po. Just comment it down below po, or if you would like, you can message us the, uh, it directly to us po, PDV and I, and to other uh, part of our team po. Na alam nyo na po na part po like uh, si Brother Jun Campita, uh, kay uh, JC po, and then kay Tita Maris. Uh, maybe you are part of their life group, and then you are siguro medyo na hiya kayo magtanong. You can you know, uh, address or uh, give your question to them, then we can address it yeah. po. Next, next uh, on Saturday, we're, we're going to explain yung inerrancy of the Bible. Yes. Yan po. Ayan. So, Pastor Jet, you know, <laughs> uh, PDV has made a promise. Ayan. So, <laughs> uh, he will discuss that next week. Ayan po. So, with that, uh, let's close this in a prayer. Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for your word that is so rich, Panginoon. And we thank you, Lord, for the things that you have revealed to us, that you have enforced, Panginoon, uh, sa amin po uh, today with uh, with this short time, Panginoon. And I thank you for the lessons, Lord, that uh, you have given us this uh, evening. Uh, Lord, you be glorified. You yes. be magnified, Panginoon, and you be yes. the center of everything that we do. Uh, yes, we Lord. give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Oh, Thank you, Paul. And then we are going to see you again next week. Invite. Yun po sinabi ni PDV kanina. Invite others. Ayan. And then, um, uh, you know, maybe to uh, announce na rin po, we are uh, having uh, a series po every uh, Sunday for God-Centered Life. Uh, uh, ito po based po sa book po ng atin pong senior pastors, Pastor Albert. So you can also get the book from Shopee, by the way. Uh, we will post po. Uh, the, the post is also is already posted. I'm sorry. The, the <laughs> po ay nakapost na po sa ating page. You know, if if you would like to order, and you can also order directly from us po if you are from. Uh, I think if you're from Metro Manila. So ayun po. Uh, thank you again, and see you next week. I have an announcement. Uh, tomorrow begins the 8 o'clock yeah. face-to-face. Ay, oo nga po pala. Yeah. Uh, tomorrow also, you know, we will be opening our 8 o'clock face-to-face service. So live yes. na po. So uh, uh, yung mga, uh, those who are, do, those who prefer Tagalog uh, service po, again, uh, we, we would like to, uh, announce po na meron na po ulit tayong Tagalog service na live sa mga gusto na pong ma, ano, makita, maki-join ng face-to-face service. We welcome you. You know, uh, our doors po, the, the church doors are widely open for you. Yun po. So come tomorrow po. And then uh, as usual po, yung 10 a.m. po natin, the English is also live and then will be also be broadcasted po live sa ating Facebook page. Tapos yung yung ano yung EGR pastor encounter ayan sige po i-flash na natin <laughs> encounter cries uh online po this is previously known as EGR encounter uh god retreat po so this is now done online so you can scan po yung QR code to register uh we you can message us also directly if you would like to get po yung link to register so this will be on the 29th uh, 28 and 29 from uh, 1 30 p.m. to 4 30 p- uh, p.m. via Zoom. Ayan po. And then, meron pa po ba ate, I mean? Ah, yon. I think yun na lang po. Ayan. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, we thank you all. See you next week po. See you guys. Bye bye. <laughs>